Now, what was happening there was that we saw that when the winter came, something else was then the model adapted to that. That's perfectly fine. But w when the next summer is coming, why is that different from the previous summer? Why doesn't it go back down? Well, it starts to go back down a little bit, but not a whole lot. The reason for this is that we're not forgetting anything. We are just adding and adding and adding. So like we did in the trend models, we did the local trend models, we can do a similar thing here, where we say that we have a memory phase on our prediction errors, and we want to minimize this with a memory structure that depends on the time difference between now and th the observation time. And then we can do that as a way to least squares expression, get the same solution as we got back then. And then everything is working out. Basically, to be a little bit more generic, what we typically do is to just use lambda to some power of the time difference between two observations to give the weight. That's the usual thing here, standing here and looking at the weights backwards in time. If lambda is 1, well, there's no forgetting. If lambda is less than 1, of course, has to be positive, then we do forget in an exponential matter. But it turns out that this structure actually works with a varying l lambda as a function of time, as long as the weight is always what was multiplied by the most recent estimated lambda. And the weight should be 1 for the current point in time. So you can also update the smoothing of the memory as a function of time, if you like. It still works out. So if we do adaptive recursive least squares, then the equations are very similar to before. What is red is what is changed. So we just forget the old x transpose x and the old observations, and then do a ticket from there. Again, we can eliminate the equation for h, if you like. And the equation there is exactly the same as before, so not much to be said there. And likewise, we can eliminate the matrix inversion if that is an interest that we have. Uh, in particular case, it's basically just some ones here that becomes lambdas instead. So the easiest thing is to have constant forgetting. So lambda is just a fixed number. and if you recall, what is then the memory? What is the effective out number of observations in that case? It's 1 divided by 1 minus lambda, as we looked at many a long time ago. And how to find the outcome of lambda is basically you can do trial and error, but you can also optimize to find the value of lambda that minimizes the objective function. So of course, then you should figure out which criteria to evaluate. Most typically, what you look at is the sum of squared one-step prediction errors. And then, as mentioned earlier on, when trying to do optimization, it's very important that you skip an initialization period to make sure that you don't get any inference, uh, influence from those initial observations that are just noise. So that was fixed forgetting. Now, how about variable forgetting? There are many different options for doing that many different methods. Some are simple, some are complex. I will just show you a rather simple one where you say, well, I want to have the objective here as zero. I want to have that aiming at a fixed number. And then I'll pick my next lambda as 1 minus how large was my most recent prediction error, and then normalize by how uncertain things are and this goal that I'm aiming at. This should be combined with a lower bound on lambda to not forget everything, because then you cannot invert anything anymore. So think of that. And you can tune this algorithm by picking a 0. So lambda here now becomes a function, so don't optimize lambda, but you optimize what is the objective that how uncertain do you need to accept things to be. So. Let's go back and look at the same example with the temperature and the heat consumption. And now what we'll do is that we'll use a first a fixed forgetting factor of 0.995. We'll look at the hourly data, 
And I've just at two points in time, I indicated up here we have the data, and then I have indicated the memory here, how is the weight on the previous observations, and we see that we're looking at things that happened in the past 500 to 1,000 uh, hours. That's basically what gives you the estimate. And then you can see the corresponding estimates down here. And now what we see is, first of all, that things are a little bit more wiggly, things are flexible, things are changing. But we also see that now when we get to the next springtime, the estimate of the intercept starts to go down, and the estimate of the slope starts to go back up again. We'll get back to this extra dip down here in a moment, but now let's go and have a look at that right now. <laughs> 